I was recently reunited with my old Game Boy Color from almost 25 years ago. I found this in the parking lot of my high school, and when I picked it up, there was no battery cover on the back, so I just kind of put this piece of red duct tape on there to keep the batteries in place. It's still on there to this day, and I actually checked inside to see if there was any damage from battery leakage or anything, and, and fortunately everything's okay. But as you can see, you know, we're missing the back plate, the label's coming off here, there's also some grime built up in the volume wheel, it doesn't turn very well, there's a lot of grime built up in the lens, and also these buttons are not very um, responsive. Um, it does turn on, there's that classic Game Boy sound, and so um, I'm going to just kind of clean this up today and see how it runs and clean out the PCBs and all of that kind of stuff to see if we can get those buttons working better, see if we can get the volume wheel working better, and see if we can just kind of make it look a little bit better overall. Okay, so while I clean this up, let me tell you the story of how I found it. Like I said, this was almost 25 years ago, so most of the finer details of this story, unfortunately, I've probably forgotten. But hey, it's my story, so I can make it up if I want to. So I was in high school at the time, and the last class of the day for me was chemistry. In my chemistry class, there was a girl named Amanda, who I thought was really pretty, and a guy named Elvin, who everybody thought was really weird. One day, to my surprise, Amanda asked if I would give her a ride home, which I was more than happy to oblige. But Elvin, being the socially awkward cock blocker that he was, decided to also ask me for a ride if I was offering. I wasn't offering, but I didn't want to look like an asshole in front of Amanda, so I said sure. While we were walking through the parking lot to my car, I saw this little cherry pink Game Boy lying on the ground, and I picked it up. Immediately, Elvin starts telling me how it's actually his Game Boy and that he had lost just that morning. That should tell you everything that you need to know about Elvin. He's a lying sack of shit. Never mind that he didn't have a car and thus had no reason to be in the parking lot in the first place. When that didn't work, Elvin pulled me aside and tried to make a deal where he would give me the Game Boy in question if I would let him have a chance to go out with Amanda. Typical Elvin move here, trying to trade something that he didn't have for something that he could never have. As far as I knew, Amanda was not interested in either of us, but least of all somebody who thought that she could be traded for a Game Boy. Now, I don't really remember exactly how it all went down. All I know is that somehow I came away from that with a new Game Boy and a new girlfriend. Things didn't really go that well with Amanda, but hey, I got this sweet Game Boy, right? Now for people out there who are really interested in Game Boy modding, you're probably wondering if I'm going to replace the screen with IPS or make it backlit, maybe add a rechargeable lithium battery in the back, and all of these things are things that I considered, but when I really want to play an original Game Boy cart kind of upscaled like that, I can just do that on the analog pocket. And so I kind of want to keep this project as much with original components as possible. Having said that, I did invest in one minor upgrade, which is the EverDrive GBX5 flash cart. This little bad boy can read all of my Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs off of an SD card, and I can play them on original hardware. How cool is that? So, now that I got it cleaned up, let's take a look at some of the most memorable Game Boy titles from my childhood. This is a hot take, but I would say that the first Mario game and Zelda game for the Game Boy are my favorite entries in both series. Super Mario Land has everything. Airplane battles, submarines, bouncing fireballs, and one of the weirdest and catchiest soundtracks of all time. This game turned everything that I knew about Mario on its head. I mean, your fireballs can bounce around and collect coins for you. The turtle shells explode after you step on them. And the princess name is Daisy? What the hell? It's an oddball game for sure, which is probably why I loved it so much. 
And Link's Awakening is the first time that a video game ever made me cry actual tears. And it isn't even a sad game. It also established that Mario and Zelda exist in the same kind of Tommy Westfall sort of universe. I know that the warp whistle from Mario 3 is the same as the flute from The Legend of Zelda. But this game had Goombas and Chomps just hanging out in the Zelda universe. I love this game so much that I spent hours making the windfish out of perler beads. Actually, while I'm on the topic of Nintendo properties, Donkey Kong also knocked it out of the park. Donkey Kong only ever really shows up as a final boss for each world, so this is really more of a Mario game than it is a Donkey Kong game. Donkey Kong was the first and maybe only retro title that I ever paid actual money for on the 3DS store, so clearly it takes up some important real estate in my brain. Another game that I can never forget is Gargoyle's Quest. If you know anything about my gaming history, you'll know that this is a strange pick because my parents would never let me play anything even remotely resembling magic or monsters or anything that could be tied to the occult. The devil has devised a kaleidoscope of colors and shapes designed to beguile the eye and hypnotize the brain. Somehow, this game slipped through. I mean, look at this guy. He totally looks like a scary demon. I could never even get past the first level, but it didn't really matter because playing this thing felt like I was getting away with something that I shouldn't be. And I didn't even realize until this year that this game is a spin-off of Ghosts and Goblins, even though it says it right there on the title screen. You can't really blame me though, A, because my parents would never have let me play Ghouls and Ghosts, and B, because this is probably the weirdest spin-off ever taking the most annoying character of the whole game, Red Arimer, who everyone hated. Ah! Son of a bitch! Ah! And giving him his own title? I mean, that's like giving that asshole dog from Duck Hunt his own game. Finally, number one with the bullet for me would have to be Balloon Kid. I'm not saying this was the best game, it was just the most memorable. You're this cute little girl who can't attack at all, the only thing you can do is slowly float away from hazards. It sounds like something that you couldn't pay a 10 year old boy to play, and yet, my brother and I used to fight over who got to play it next. When I was a kid, my family would take these cross country road trips to go visit our other side of the family, and we would be trapped in the car for days at a time. But this game helped while away the hours, and the trip would be over in no time. I don't even think I ever saw the end of it, but to be honest, I'm not sure if I even want to anymore. The Game Boy was a magical system for me. It was so simple and yet so sophisticated. But more than that, what I remember the most is sitting in the back of a station wagon for hours and hours while Nebraska and Wyoming and Utah and all these other states passed by in the window outside and my brother and I were lost in the worlds of Balloon Kid and Gargoyle's Quest and all of the other games that I've discussed here. I feel like I've been chasing that high ever since.